What's up, everybody? Welcome back to You Not Gonna Like This, episode 49, Mr. Kulo, as he likes to be called based on his videography page. But with that being said, you know, this week we're back with our interview, you know. We I chose an interview, the guy that did our season two vid um, last, way back last year in January. You know, I feel like it was well overdue, so, you know. No, 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 let me introduce Aaron, or Mr. Kula, as he likes to be called. Aaron, can't do stuff to people, man. Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, Like you said, well, I'm not Mr. Kula anymore. I'm Ace Visuals. I, I had a rebrand because, you know, gotta, gotta be a little bit, gotta be a little bit professional now, uh, especially with my photography and videography kind of, you know, getting up there a little bit. So, uh, yeah, what's up, everybody? All right, well, my apologies. Ace Visuals it is. Ace Visuals. I, put, I think I put Ace Visuals in a group meeting. I still said Mr. Kula. Gotta be better. Gotta be better. But uh, nonetheless, um, you know, guys, it's just a interview is for um, Aaron Hayes to, you know, endorse his, endorse, endorse, endorse his brand. Uh, and that's pretty much it, you know. Uh, Beyond, um, and that's pretty much it. So, my first question I have for you is, why why are you a videographer, and what um, inspired you to become one? Uh, all right. So, let's take it back. So, let's see. Um, why I'm a videographer mainly is because I like to create stories about anything that I do, really. So it's like even if it's just like some mundane task, like let's say um, like sitting in a room or just going out on a walk or something like that. Like I want to kind of capture that in a way where it can like um, pull in an audience and, and be like, oh, this is more than just a walk or more than just sitting in a room. This is, this is something exciting in a way. Uh, I see it. And what inspired me to become a videographer really is I've always kind of done like video work, uh, but I always did it off like an iPod or, or, or my iPhone or, and stuff like that. So it was really after I graduated high school, like my freshman year where I started doing like more, like I would make compilation videos of like what I've been doing throughout the year and stuff like that and then I would make like end of year videos where I kind of just showcase like little bits and pieces of my year and like everything that kind of happened throughout it just to, just because it was more so for me just to show like highlights of what I've done throughout the year uh, not not necessarily just not necessarily like video work but more so just like my personal life and I just had a lot of fun with that and also something that uh, inspired me were like some people around me um this one dude his name's Caleb. We went to high school together. He was always like one. He, he I'd say he was like our our video guy at, at our school. Like he would he would be the one shooting music videos and stuff like that. And I just saw that. I was like, yeah, that's cool. But it's like I never really like took it. I never really like looked at it like any deeper than that. I was just like, that's cool. I I would always I would want to do like a video like that or something. But it wasn't until let's. June no it wasn't until May of 2019 where I bought my first camera and I was like okay let's let's try and do something with this so after that I started out taking you know pictures like I wanted to use like photography as a way to kind of shape how I would create my videos so by starting out like mainly focus on photography that kind of built up like how I um, go about shooting videos and stuff with like different compositions and all that good stuff so that's kind of what inspired me basically for um, videography. That's all right, that's all right, that's all right, that's all right. Nice, nice, nice story, nice, nice story. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool to, you know, watch people figure out the love for things and how they got into where they got into, you know, it seems like you put a lot of harder time into what you do, you know, 
being that you have been focused on this since high school. And it's pretty cool that you were able to find your passion so early on. I know a lot of people that they don't get that, they don't get, they don't get that lucky. Like, you know, some people, they'll go through college like twice and then they'll be like, oh, finally I found my passion or something or anything pertaining to that. But, you know, luckily for yourself. And even for me, you know, when I came, when I came into when I came into school, I was an athletic training major. That's what I started as. And then next thing you know, I failed biology and I switched to kinesiology. And I, I'm actually kind of glad that happened. You know, I like being a personal trainer more than I like being a, more than I think I would have liked being an athletic trainer, being that I'm more involved. You know, athletic training, being being watching it firsthand is, in high school. You know, being a part of it and seeing how it works out. You know, you're not really in the process of anything, you know. You're there, but you're not there. You do a little bit of the rehab, but you don't do all the rehab. Like, you know, yeah. you kind of really just a guide for the athletes. You're not really in the in the gym with them 100% of the time, you know, watching them grow, watching them become elite, or you're not the physical therapist. Where if they the same major injury, you know, you would be able to help them recover you're not you're not really really part of the process you just you're just like the intermediate guy um along along, along the way but um uh, uh, but that leads me to my that leads me to my um, second point is my second question was actually wrote these down but um explain the difference between cinematography and videography I, you know, i'm on the outside looking in you know a lot of people could say it's the same thing being that you are record you are recording Somatic work in a sense, you know, videos are considered cinema as well. So explain the difference between those two and why you're not a cinematographer versus a videographer. So, um, all right. So, yeah, people, a lot of people can confuse uh, cinematography and videography just because, you know, you're working with videos in a way. But to me, I feel like the main difference between like, uh, like videography and cinematography is, um, how you go about doing it and how much planning you kind of put into what you're going to do. And it's like, for, for videography, it's like, I could just go out and like record my day, make like a, a day in the life vlog or make one of them videos where it's like, you're asking people questions or, or whatever and stuff like that. It, that's kind of like what videography is, or it's just like, you know, you're recording someone's workout. You, you put some, some pretty edits on it. Um, some some cool effects on it just to make it look nice it's, it's something quick that you can do and i've done plenty i've done that plenty of times where I, was, I, I just go out i shoot for like let's say an hour hour or two and then i come back and it only takes me about like i want to say 30 to an hour 30 minutes to an hour to kind of like throw together just some some video where i just put some some music track over the over the video just to kind of tie everything together that's kind of what videography is. It's it's not so much as like planning. It's more so just kind of doing what you feel is right to you in the moment and just kind of uh, like getting out content uh, as quick as possible uh, sometimes. Whereas cinematography, cinematography is it it deals more so with uh, planning and kind of understanding how you want to shoot different things. And uh, sometimes it's about like telling a story. I, I've, I view cinematography as like telling a story. So usually cinematography also deals with, it could deal with having more than just yourself uh, like shooting a video like you could have someone who's working with um, like audio trying to capture audio for you for a video just because audio is very important in the process of making uh, good videos because I don't think a lot of people realize how much audio comes into play when it uh, when it when it comes time to shooting a video just because you can have a pretty looking video but if the the audio is off just by a little bit people will notice that and that could really like turn them off from watching a video but back to cinematography. So there's a lot of moving pieces for cinematography and there's a lot of planning. Like I shot a short film at the, at the end of December where I just kind of wanted to uh, uh, spread the message of uh, calling people instead of texting them um, like around the holidays and such. So for that, I had to plan a lot of my shots. So I started out like making a storyboard and kind of like making little illustrations of different shots and how I want to shoot my shots and stuff like that 
to kind of create a narrative of me going uh, throughout my day and and leading up to me making that call to uh, a family member or a special someone or, or what, what have you. So for that, it took me about two days to kind of like gather what I wanted to do, storyboard everything, kind of uh, mess around with different shots and angles just to see which shots uh, would work the best for what I was trying to do. And then that's, it took me about a day to actually uh, do the filming just because uh, I had to make sure the audio is right. I had to make sure each of the scenes were set up properly. And I also had to make sure there was enough lighting because for cinematography, lighting is also a big deal because when it comes to lighting, lighting uh, can create a mood. Um, it really um, creates the setting for uh, wherever you're at. So I had to kind of work with the lighting too, just to kind of set up how I wanted to do everything. So by doing that, I kind of uh, learned more about what it takes for to be a cinematographer. And it's basically like learning. You have to, you, you kind of have to have some knowledge of everything uh, in the in the realm of like videography well whereas videography you don't really have to have knowledge of let's say like sound design or um, composition of a shot or um, like what like what kind of music you want for a shot or like the kind of uh, overall uh, theme you want to make for the video it's just kind of like base level knowledge in a way all right, so all right. Glad, 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 you, glad you explained that. You know, I 100% feel you on the audio thing, you know. Just doing the podcast alone, you know, nothing's worse than not having, like, clean audio, understanding what people are saying. It's, it's rough. It's, it's rough. It's hard to, like, edit over stuff like that. For I, sure, for sure. Very, very hard, but it's not, it's not clear and concise where I can understand completely what is being said, right? Like, Audio is audio is a huge, huge factor in almost anything that revolves the recording of the camera. And uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, you know. So then my follow to that is being that you you're now getting your videography brand going, have you ever thought of expanding into cinematography or are you just comfortable with videography at the moment in time? So I, I have thought about expanding into uh, cinematography and, and kind of I want I want to kind of do like a hybrid type thing where it's like I still do the videography work because I do make I do enjoy making like those quick little videos or stuff like that, you know, like um, like uh, for the basketball team at, at George Mason, I was I was shooting at the basketball game. So I, I like making videos uh, from when they played. It, it, it was fun because it's like you you have these like quick uh, clips that you can uh, put together and then just uh, slap a song on it and and it just makes everybody happy just because I just like the outcome of it. But then also I want to kind of uh, dip my toes more into the, the realm of cinematography and kind of uh, make more uh, short films for myself just because my whole thing about doing the work that I do is I am, I'm mostly doing it for myself just because this is a, a passion that I've had for a while. So that's kind of what I want to do. So uh, kind of splitting the difference and uh, learning more about cinematography uh, so I can create uh, more meaningful work to myself is something that I'm looking forward to. That's, that's, that's all right. That's good. That's good. I like to hear, I like to hear that. It's not bad to see people love to that, that dive into their passion more and not, you know, I'm, I'm very comfortable with being more expansive to, you know, what they, what, what they do. And it's, you know, I, I you know, besides obviously editing the podcast, you know, I, I, I find editing fun. It's something I kind of enjoy doing, you know. I did start, you know, I play 2K, I play Madden a lot. So, you know, I did have a little fun editing things like that, putting clips and game page just to have some of the fun to do. And it's, and it's kind of nice when you put the song on it and you edit it, you get the smooth transitions. Those things kind of turn out real nice when you actually spend the time and make it look real good. So that, that's it always it always is good to see your end product towards towards those things. But Malcolm, you got anything? It just I mean what I'm hearing, and uh correct me if I'm wrong, cinematog cinematography is uh 
a Quentin Tarantino or Christopher Nolan in videography as let's say someone who blocks somebody popular T Jazz, one of the basketball people, or somebody in 2K. Not saying, not trying to say one is less than the other, but it, that, that's what the different a direct. It sounds like cine, cinematography is really based on like how, like you said, the type of shots you're doing. You know, Quentin Tarantino does this thing where he goes pans in closely on the uh, faces. Christopher Nolan does stuff with the lighting and makes it like really dark. So I, uh, it sounds like cinematography is the next step in it, or is it? I mean. Yeah, I think I, I think I got it. It sounds like they're two distinct, two distinct um, videography is pretty much like you said, making someone's highlight reel or a highlight tape, someone's tape and cinematography, like you said, is, you know, let's say I want to make an animated short. Is that that's correct, right? Yeah, that's that, that's correct. It's a uh, videography. Like, don't get me wrong. Videography, you can put a lot of work into like your videos. Like I've seen content from a lot of different um uh, schools in the nation who who work with like these athletic programs and such and like their videos blow me away by how much work they put into it but I feel like it's it's quicker when it comes time for um, videography and it's more so it's like you get a shot and that's kind of it you can't you can't take back that shot while cinematography it's like you can have multiple shots you you have to plan out those multiple shots just so you can get the the best version of the shot you're looking for so uh, videography is is a lot more fast paced in, in in terms of like the product that you're you're going to get while video uh, while cinematography is more uh, it's it's slow paced in a way uh, uh, by means of um like the research and playing that you have that goes into making uh whatever piece of work that you're doing okay. you gotcha okay pretty cool that's pretty cool that's pretty cool that's pretty cool, that's, that's pretty cool. i like hmm. i have to look at the cinematography some more i might do some new ideas some things i try some new stuff but i'm always looking to expand and add things to the podcast so definitely i might have to look into making things look a little more professional uh, yeah, it's, it's like it's it's not like it it doesn't take that much. Like you just you just gotta know the the basics. Like like if I were if I were to take your room right now and uh, give you any tips, I'd say just add like lighting in different places because the lighting of your room can also kind of set a mood and and kind of make every bring up the quality of everything. It's not necessarily like your camera equipment. It's it's more so like the the things that you got around you at the moment. Like what kind of lighting can you get uh, at the moment that can really bring up the quality of uh, your production? Yeah, I, I, I put I put I, I put a lot of time into it. It's gotten better, you know. If you look back at episode one to where we are now, yeah, things have definitely gotten a lot better. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep trying to figure things out. Hopefully, you know. Right now, all I got is the Kobe and the Michael Jordan the left right hand side. But something I recently did, I started collecting like vinyls, and my goal is to like hang those around the basketball, the basketball thing. Like it's supposed to be this nice little square. You got albums and you got the basketball uh, or plaques, yeah, that's what we call plaques, lining up in there. Because you know, if everybody knows basketball, the music go basically hand in hand. So that's the basic the concept I have. So I just got to find and get all the stuff in place and make it all right. So yeah, definitely stay tuned. So if you see I with a new background in a couple months, just know we were working hard to get it all put together. But yeah. That's 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 definitely that's definitely a good thing because you know it kind of show, it show it definitely shows off your personality because I know you're definitely a big basketball guy and you're definitely a, a big music guy. So having that stuff is is a good um, key point for kind of showing off your personality. Definitely, definitely, definitely. But you know, this leads me to my, my next thing is um a couple of episodes ago we had we had Tyler on here, you know, Tyler, Tyler spoke highly of you, man. Tyler, you know, Tyler said he was this guy, you know, Tyler spoke highly of you. He said he, he, yeah. he wanted you to be on his team, you know, with T Best and photos and things of that nature. And I just want you to just explain your relationship with Tyler, man. Why? Like would we do we need to be on the lookout for Tyler and Andrew? We need to be able to look out for them. Are they coming? Like, well, we're we're teammates because um, we ran track together, but that kind of like 
it grew more like the more I got into photography because when I got my second camera because I told him I was doing photography and then I was looking for a new camera to use because my old camera it was just like some random camera I found found on Amazon I just wanted to use it for practice and then I got my next camera it was a Nikon and and Tyler uh, was a big Nikon guy so he he kind of showed me the ropes for a lot of things for like when it came to the settings and like working with the different functions of the camera just so I could get a nice shot so it's like in a way, he, he was kind of a mentor for me in the beginning when it came to photography. And then we just kind of like grew together. Like I would show him stuff. He would show me stuff. So it's kind of like a, a give and take relationship. Like the two of us, we've, we've really built off each other just so we can make something for ourselves. So a lot of the things that we've done together is like we've, We've worked with the basketball team. We've worked with uh, different like organizations with uh, uh, the Zetas to uh, do a reveal for them, as well as we we actually did for the the past uh, student body president for George Mason. Me and Tyler, we worked together to basically do all their campaign videos, um, their photos, and all that good stuff. So it's like when we're when we're when we're separated, it's like. We make great work, but when we're together, we make like our our peak is is limitless to say the least. Uh, he's a he's a really great guy. He he has a really like strong. Uh, let me let me see how, how to put this. He has a really strong base when it comes uh, in in terms for um, working with people and also the whole kind of business aspect for like photography and videography. So it's like, I, I'm always looking to him and I'm always looking to like ask questions about, um, how to go about handling people when it comes to when I work with them. So it's like, even though I've grown more over the, uh, years from when I first started, I still kind of look to him as kind of like, a as a beacon, uh, to kind of, help me elevate to the next level so that's kind of our relationship it's like it's a it's a give and take relationship but I still see him as like a as a mentor when it comes to doing a lot of like photography work in, in particular just because he's he has a lot he has a lot more knowledge when it comes to photography than me I just kind of do my thing and it's like I, I kind of hope for the best and it can it usually can turn out good or it can turn out bad, but I've just tried. Well, Tyler, he's consistently had like great work. Like he he doesn't post as much as I post, but when he does post, you can really tell that he's he's done a lot of like work for the for the photos that he's done or like the videos that he's done uh, with his drone, especially just because he's a he's a, he's the drone guy between us also. So and seeing his work uh, grow is is been pretty inspiring and I kind of I don't want to see him as a rival but I I want to use him to kind of keep getting better and I hope he wants to use me so he can keep be getting better as well that's how it's supposed to be yeah definitely yeah definitely definitely agree with Tyler definitely talking about um why he got tired in the first place being that he just loves seeing like the reaction of people like he loves seeing the smile on their faces and Things were changing of that nature. Like, that was one of the main reasons he got into photography and why he stays with it. So it's good to see you guys collaborate. You know, it's always good to see people working together and not trying to take you down to get to the end goal. You know, each of you all trying to work together to, you know, be the, I guess, a dynamic duo, if you will, you know. Um, I, we don't got no, well, we do, but Shaq and Cole, we can go Shaq and Cole, we can go Brian Wade, we, 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 we can say that, we can say that, yeah, 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 definitely, definitely, so, you know, hopefully, I wish y'all the best, man, I hope that you, you know, y'all succeed together, you know, I've been seeing a lot of Tyler's work, I've seen your work firsthand, and I've seen it secondhand as well, so, you know, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good stuff, y'all got a good thing going on for y'all, so, so I wish y'all the best of luck. But, yeah. Um, that leads to the next thing. So, you know, I'm going to piggyback on Tyler again, you know, so so, 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 so my, my next question is, what, what would you give, what would be your advice to a beginning videographer? Because his, his biggest thing was that on top of he said, 
with this iPhone camera right here, you can make things look crazy. All right, do you think the same way about videography or do you think just a little bit different when it comes to starting out? And so it's like, just if, if you want to be a videographer or anything, just use what you have in the moment. Like, you don't have to be like, oh, I need to get a camera or something like that. Like, I need the, the latest and greatest camera to make something. It's like, I've seen, I see people who have, who have like the best cameras who produce kind of subpar work just because they don't really know what they're doing. They don't know what they want to do when it comes to uh, filming and stuff like that. So it's like, just use what you have. Uh, one of one of I'm I'm not sure if you know who this is, but his name's Cole Bennett. He he shoots a lot of videos for uh for big names. Uh, like uh, let's see who do you, who do you just do a video for? He just did a video for for Justin Bieber, uh, and he did some other videos for for some other people. And you know what he shot it on? iPhone. He shot it on an iPhone. He did. He did. He. he, he he did he did all the work on on iPhone and I think that's 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 amazing. So it's not about what what equipment you have, it's about what you can do with that equipment or what your 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 goal is with that equipment. So it's like just just start start now and and start with what you have. You don't you don't have to go out and try and, you know, spend thousands of dollars on like you know, cameras, uh, lights, uh, mics, all that stuff. You can just start with you can just start with your iPhone, like like Tyler said. Or if if you want, you can use your Android. I don't have any hate against Androids, but uh, it's 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 really really a preference thing. So just use 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 what you got, and you don't you don't really have to overthink things. And then also research <laughs> re oh bless you, but re <laughs> research a lot because learning videography it's it may look simple but it's not simple there's a lot of different layers to it and there's a lot of um things you should learn about videography like different techniques when you're recording and stuff like that just to kind of captivate people just because it's it's fine to have you know just videos where you're just standing in one place and recording something like that but if like you can if you can add like a, a whip or you can add like a little like they, they call this like a, a vortex spin if you can add that to your video that can add a add another layer uh to your um to your work so it's like just learning little techniques and then just knowing when to use those techniques will will go a long way just because for a lot of my videos I'm not doing like super like out of this world stuff. I'm just doing like simple whips or simple uh, push-ins, pull-outs for um, my camera. Yeah, that's, that's, that's hmm. awesome. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. Same here with me when it comes to editing. You know, I did a lot with the Animatica app, you know, you know, share my sources, you know, Animatica. So, uh, uh, I did a lot with that app, you know, that app is, it's not Adobe Illustrator, it's not Splice, it's not one of these high-end uh, video uh, editing tools that is available, but even when I'm out, it has everything that I, I need, and, you know, I became more, I think, exploitative, I think that is the correct word, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but I became, like, more intuitive, like, I've learned how to just do, like you said, the, like the minimal thing, like just find the little thing within your editing tools can make something turn out that much better. And, you know, being that all the animations they have, like I started with just one animation, now I do a few other animations that I've added to my editing when it comes to the episodes in the video podcast part. I've also, you know, for season, I know the season two recap, I know I did a lot of overlays, I did some, I did some word overlays, I did some image overlays, I did all things like that, you know, and it was, I was just experimenting with it, like, that, like, that, like, most of the work that a lot of, that I see that I send out, a lot of people don't know, that's probably my first time ever releasing it, I just really, I just do it, you know, I'm a, I'm a real instinctive person when it comes to editing, you know, obviously, I always try to make it look the best it can look, but I'm not afraid to go ahead and try something a little new, a little bit. you know, one thing, I, I do want to try to learn to get more accurate with voiceovers. You know, I think voiceovers can be real, real nice if I do it on the right content. I just got to figure out where I want to do it on. But um, 
overall, you know, I understand the editing portion, you know, I understand how to get the most out of the least amount of things. And even now, you know, um, I, you know, I pay for this other thing, this image description service that I have where, you know, it's called Canva, you know, with Canva, you know, I can do almost anything and everything. Like it has so many different pre-built images and it just makes things come together so much nicer. And, you know, I can add words over the time. You know, it, it's a full-on image editor. And the best thing about the tool is it has the pixel, it has like the, the pixel grids for like each, each, each kind of, each kind of, mode you would like. We have Instagram story mode or post the YouTube thumbnail styles. It has all these various styles that I didn't even know that they had until I sat there and I looked at it one day. I was like, oh, it has this, that. And you know, now I'm fully I'm, I'm, I'm fully comfortable using the tool and it's just like, it's effortless to me now. And I'm just real glad that I took the time to, you know, sit there and just continually play with it, continually try to you know, work with it until I became proficient at it. And now that I am proficient at it, you know, it feels good. It feels good to actually see it all come together with just very, without spending, you know, like you said, thousands and thousands and thousands of equipment, you know. Nothing, nothing I have, nothing I've ever bought to edit or even the setup that I have now has went over a hundred thousand at all, so. Yeah, just, and, gotta, and you know, it's like, what uh, kind of, kind of uh, going off what you're saying, like with kind of how you started off. Uh, I started off and, and to this day, I still have this app on my phone. It's called, it's called Video Shop. And uh, before it kind of like, it, it's kind of grown over the years. I got this app and I want to say 2016, I bought it for $4.99. But now it's, it's become one of those apps where it's like, you kind of have to pay like a monthly fee or whatever. But I got the, the, the cool thing about it is I got grandfathered in. So it's like, I don't have to pay any of those subscriber fees or anything. So it's like, I get, I get all the updates and I get all the, the newest stuff that they do. And I've been, I've been editing videos on it at, since 2016. I still edit videos on it uh, today, whenever I want to make like a short video or something like that. And it's like, I don't need to use my camera. I just go into a video shop and I use that. So it's like using, using video shop, has really been a great help. And then when I, once I transitioned over to using uh, Premiere Pro, because that's kind of like what all video uh, videographers, even cinematographers use for um, like making their content and stuff like that. So it's like kind of having that base knowledge uh, from video shop kind of helped me um, ease, ease better into working with um, more complex uh, um, applications like uh, Premiere Pro. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You got to understand the basics for you. Like, that's my biggest advice to anybody. Anybody that's videography, photography, cinematography, even if you are a podcast editor like myself, man, please don't spend a thousand dollars on some editing equipment that you have never, ever, ever touched in your life. At first, you got to start with the 399s, the 299s, the 499s. Yes, it's not going to be elite at first. And even if you use Premiere Pro or Adobe Illustrator or even even if, even Canva like I use, you know, it's still gonna be the same way it looks if you use a front and not app because one, you never ever ever even use anything to edit, so you're not you're not gonna learn it. And I think it's best to like start out while you're paying four dollars a month versus starting out paying sixty dollars a month. The, the 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 pressure is gonna be tremendous on yourself to try to learn the tool so quickly because you know you're paying so much for it. Where if you pay four dollars a month, you still won't be conscientious of that. I'm still paying for this, but it's not gonna be that insurmountable pressure that like, oh I gotta learn this quickly, quickly, quickly because I'm dropping a bag. And you just can learn it at your own pace, and you can learn it at a very comfortable rate. And the best way, the best way, the best way to learn things is to go slow. You know, that's something I preach as a personal trainer. You, you get great results when you go slow at first. You got you got to start slow. You got to start slow before you can accelerate and do the, the big things. But, you know, that leads me to my, I will say, let me see, yep, final question. So, what is next for yourself? Another part of this question is what's next for yourself and has a videographer? So what's next for myself is, well, I mean, I just graduated, uh, so I'm, I'm currently just kind of getting ready to uh, 
transition to that next stage of my life where I, I start working in the industry and stuff like that, just because I need something to kind of help uh, fund my, my video uh, passion. So it's like, I'm a software engineer. So it's like, I think that's going to kind of help me uh, fund like my passion so I can keep doing what I'm doing and I, I can learn more uh, skills so I can kind of continue to grow in that aspect. So right now it's just, the transition to the next phase of my life of uh, just working every day, really. And then also I want to kind of uh, be able to put out more content more consistently just because throughout college is like in college, I was putting out content, but I wasn't putting out content like how I wanted it be just because, you know, I had, I had classes, I was working, um, I was running track. So it's like just those three things alone kind of left me with little uh, space to do a lot of my video work. So it's like a lot of the times that I, I post a lot of video work is was usually when we're on break, like winter break or over the summer and stuff like that. So now that I just kind of have a job to focus on, I, I'm hoping that I'll be able to um, be more consistent with creating work and uh, putting out work. And then as a, as a videographer, I just hope I can continue to grow. And eventually I, I want to make a, like a real short film with, you know, more than just me or more than just my brother as, as the talent. I want to make something like semi big, but not like too big. I just want, I want to make something that will, that will captivate the masses. That's tough, that's tough, that's tough, that's tough, man, that's tough, and I, I, I know that feeling, you know, being that, I'm out of, you know, I graduated a couple months ago, being that I finally just, you know, focusing on the job, and this is just, just job, and then my other adventures with podcasts and the first training, of course, you know, just focusing on these three things, I've been able to put a lot of my time into it, and the work has became even better, you know, I was still doing a decent job in school, but now that I'm out of school, I've had more time to allocate towards it, and it's turned out way better than I could even expect, you know. And so I definitely encourage you to keep going, you know. Times can get difficult. And, you know, one of the things, and I'm going to go back to Ty Tyler, so you can get stuck. Sometimes if you don't look at your previous work, you can feel like you're not progressing at all because you'll get because you're, in, because you're in the ground, you know. When you're in the ground, you don't always see the results of the ground as much. But I will say, man, if you need somebody, to, you know, jump in and do, you know, some talent out there. I'll definitely, I'll definitely help you out for your film and things like that. I'll definitely help you out. You know, that's something I ain't never did before. I ain't never been part of it. I've always been doing the behind the scenes, but I've never been in it besides, obviously, but to be on the outside looking in to see it. who will give me a different outlook on the process, and, you know, I might learn something from it. They might give me something that I could do for, for myself in the future as well. But, um, Overall, that's that's pretty much it, man. Um, you know, do you have anything you'd like to tell the people before we close out? Uh, tell the people, let's see. I mean, you know, first of all, I, I gotta say, uh, you know, uh, follow me on Instagram, Ace Visuals. Uh, follow me on, well, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ace Visuals, because I hope I can put out more content and more videos. And I'm planning on putting out more content right now. I'm in Texas, actually, so it's like the only thing I got with me is my camera. So um, I, I, I'm not putting out content as like what I want, like as much as I want, but once I get back over to the East Coast, I'll, I'll definitely be um, doing more content and stuff like that. So uh, I just want everybody to know to stay tuned, uh, stay with me. And, and I appreciate everybody who's, who's worked with me or anybody I've done work for. Um, it's, it's been fun. So uh, just, just keep working with me and we'll make something beautiful. Sounds good. Couldn't, couldn't have said any, couldn't have said any better way. But you know, other things going on for here at the podcast, man, this next episode is episode 50. Yes, we have made it. it feels good to say I made 50. I'm, I'm, I'm on the cusp of 50 episodes. A lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of things have been put into it. You know, so many guests, so many people like yourself and others for being a part of the You're Not Gonna Like This brand for this moment, to, to, from today and this moment henceforth. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna talk too much about 50. I don't even know what I'm talking about 50 at this point in time. 
But hopefully when I do, when I do get to it, I'll have something nice and something pretty cool, cool, cool jumped up for, you know, feels good to finally get to that point. But otherwise, you know, we got, uh, if you haven't tuned in yet, tune into Music Central, please, you know. I, you know, I mean, like this, something else I decided to do, you know, music, musically, I'm, I, like I said, I'm a big music guy, you know, and I decided to add a music podcast that I already know I'm going to like this podcast. Definitely check that out, you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's great, you know, uh, two acts, you know, first, first act we talk about ooh, the, the crew, the crew of me, me, Jamila, Pete, um, and Devin and PJ, uh, we talk about our favorite album by our favorite artists, and in the second part, uh, we revisit 90s rap, you know, one of the golden ages of rap, so definitely tune in for that as well. Other things, I got a triple threat, you know, man, hoops is everything, man, you can see the two guys behind me, so, you know, we definitely talk about a lot of hoops here, so. Stay tuned for that. We got articles on Medium. So if you have not took the time to read those, I encourage you. They're great reads. Um, I have an article out there. Fonte has a few out there. So definitely take a chance on us. You know, trying to get trying to get more creative and more expansive every day, trying to think of new things I can always bring to the podcast. You know, it's a free form platform. So if you got any topics, if you got any songs, if you got anything that you would like to see or add it to the podcast, let me know. I'm definitely I'm definitely looking for things to venture on and try out because you know you gotta be willing to grow. If you don't willing to grow, you more than I don't want to say fail. Fail is a strong word to use, but for lack of better terms, if you don't grow with the times, more than likely you will fail to succeed overall. But that's all I got for you all today, man. You know, um, as always, this is your host Iris sign off, and a big appreciate. Big thanks to Aaron for joining us. And as always, see y'all soon.